can't stop it, please. I asked them to you not know, paint them later for, for the pictures. Well, I, I hope I don't put you to sleep. I'm going to try to be really fast on this presentation. It's about ice cream. Uh, as well as the beer, the first try I did it didn't work, but the second one did, so it's a good thing. I'm going to keep on trying with the beer now. Uh, it's a presentation about ice cream, soft cream, and sorbet. Uh, the, the products basically, the, the ice cream, you have to have new protein in it, you have certain amounts that you must have and you must have also certain amounts of fat. Uh, the amount of fat varies a lot from country to country. I was talking with my friend from Belgium, and in Belgium usually uh, ice cream that's serious, a ice cream that you would uh, consider as being good, should have 12% fat, right? Well, in Brazil, standard ice cream has only 8% fat. That's the amount that we expect it to have. Uh, in many countries, you don't expect something called ice cream to have any vegetable fat or shortening. Like in Belgium, it's probably, probably dairy uh, cream. Same thing, I think, in Italy. Well, in Brazil, you can have whatever fat. It can be even dairy, but it's seldom if you find this kind of ice cream there. And soft cream, on the other hand, is the ice cream we, we eat right when it comes off the machine. So like the McDonald's self-serving ice cream, that's what I, I'm calling here soft cream. For the soft cream, the content of protein is more important than the content of fat. What really matters is if the texture is right and if the ice cream doesn't melt you know, before you eat it. It should really melt in your mouth and not on your hands. So that's something we don't want to have. Uh, sherbet, on the other hand, is just here for illustration. It's uh, uh, an ice cream, let's say, with a, a lower content of protein or lower solid content. So you can find it a little bit icy. And the sorbet is finally the product made with fruit juice. So it has fruit juice instead of uh, dairy based, it is a sorbet. Well, the key advantages we found with Citrify is that we could do fat replacement in ice cream. We tried to do also a stabilizer replacement, but then we had a little bit of taste. Because it would have to, to add a lot of Citrify to it. And actually you have some stabilizers system, stabilization systems, like the ones our friend from Spain finally got to me. That's why the ice cream worked today. Uh, some systems they include also emulsifiers, so it is a bit hard for you to replace everything only for citrify. You need a little bit of, of emulsifier in it. Uh, but fat replacement is okay. You keep the stabilizer system there and you just replace the fat, it works perfectly. We could do up to 30% fat replacement on a deep frozen product. Probably our formulation with 30% reduction would be good enough in many countries for you to have over 50% uh, reduction. Our product had uh, 5.6 uh, grams of uh, fat by 100 grams of product in the end. Uh, on the soft ice cream, on the other hand, we could go up to 60% because you eat it right away, it comes, from out, it comes out the machine and you don't have to deep freeze it. On the sorbet, we could replace synthetic products, we could take all the stabilizers off. We had a little decrease on overrun, but then with machine adjustment you can uh, compensate it. And flavor pastes. Does anyone know flavor paste for ice cream? Well, in Italy, they like to sell some pastes rich in flavor. Some of them are based on natural products, other include synthetic flavors in it, but they look like a paste. They're not the liquid flavor or liquid color thing. And because of that, it should be easier for you to incorporate an ice cream. In Brazil, you have a lot of small businesses that like to, to buy the flavor and uh, color paste instead of buying the liquid thing. Guess what binds oil? and also can bind water. Well, you can mix that thing, wherever you're thinking, you can mix it with the essential oils of the flavor and color, you, and the person's going to use it in the ice cream, and guess what, it's going to bond water, and it's going to get better texture. 
So that's a market we found in Brazil for pastes with flavor. And whatever you're thinking should work on it. Why reduce fat? We could wonder. In Belgium, don't touch it, right? It has to be there. But you know what? If we keep on eating that much, that's what's going to happen. It's even an economical matter nowadays. That's the shape of things to come. Look at the size of the cup the guy's holding. It could be a cup of uh, ice cream, I guess. So, we better start looking for fat reduction. The trials we did and the formulation you're going to see here were actually developed by a company called Food Intelligence. They have over 35 years of experience in ice cream making and they, they can help you further if you will, if you want, if you require their help. They can help you with the specifics, formulation and <coughs> solutions. They have developed uh, three products for us to show in a trade show in Brazil called the Food Ingredients. Uh, this is a deep frozen ice cream with 30% fat reduction. This is the process right there. Can you all read it? Yeah, it is there? Okay, so I'm not going to explain it so deep. All you have to do, you mix the powders with the liquids, you pasteurize it, homogenize it, and then you froze it. You freeze it. Uh, what's really important is what we did with the formulation there. You have 8% 8, 8 fat, that's the standard product. We got it down to 5.6 and we added citrified water. The ratio of citrified to water is 12.33. This is pretty good water retention without any ice crystal formation. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't get a, a good structure on deep, fro deep freezing with more than 30% fat replacement. But this one was good, had a nice overrun and really could pass as a, a traditional product. And it's not hard as a rock when you take it off the freezer. Usually, like products, you have to cut it, use a knife, whatever you will, but it's really hard to eat it off the freezer. This is the soft cream. Well, the process is basically the same. Usually, our customers, like McDonald's, they get the preparation, the liquid preparation ready. They have it in packages, in uh, ultra high temperature uh, packaging or bags. Well, they have the liquid thing in the store and they put it in the machine, we call it the tailor, and the machine just freezes it right away. The ice cream life, then we ate it, so it didn't last that long. But I, I have the pictures I can share with you. Uh, this here then is the standard formulation for a soft ice cream and we did that. We just reduced the fat to 2.9, so it was 8, the standard, we went to 2.9. There is no difference in texture, and if you see the picture again, you can see, you can have the form. You can do the shape as you will, the, the, the same way it should be. And actually we had served 18 liters of this product during the trade show. Nobody complained, nobody called sick. And that's good news, I think. Okay, the last but not least is sorbet. This one we actually have customers. Okay, for the soft ice cream, we're trying McDonald's in Brazil, and we're trying uh, also the company that makes for another uh, fast food chain called Bob's that actually belongs to Nestle. Uh, but sorbet, we have some small producers of uh, acai sorbet, and they use it. Uh, the idea is acai is consumed into gyms. So the people in gyms, they have the attitude toward natural products and all, helpful products. And what we wanted to do was offer a whole natural, natural product to them. So we took all the synthetic stuff, like CMC, Shantan gum, and Guar gum. And actually we only left uh, distilled monoglyceride if the customer wants a higher overrun. If not, we can take it off too. And this is what we would do. We would prepare uh, phase one, just blend our ingredients, disperse the mixture of the dry ingredients into water. Then, of course, whatever fruit you choose, you're gonna have to, to unfreeze the pulp of it. So, you defreeze the pulp, you add phase one, and you go through the process as if it were a standard ice cream. You homogenize it, pasteurize it, then you freeze it. Here's the formulation, and simply what we did were on the line where you read stabilizer, 
gallons. We changed it to C35200. Uh, actually, acai is very dark. It's dark purple, so you cannot see the dots or anything on it. And if you go into strawberry or other fruits, there won't be an issue to use the, the bigger granulometry. It completely disappears during the process. All right, Every, everybody okay? What is Dimodan? What? Do, who? Dimodan. What is it? Dimodan. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I've been using a lot of stuff from the NISCO here in this presentation. Uh, the Cremodan is a stabilizing system from the NISCO and Dimodan is distilled monoglyceride the NISCO. You don't have to use the NISCO. You can use Bosger, Gary, you know, we have a bunch of them. Yeah, just whatever. This is 90%, by the way. The difference between distilled monoglyceride and standard ones that this one's at least 90% monoglyceride. But you, you, you only keep it if you want 30% of overrun or more. If, if you don't, you, you don't have to use it. No? With the 100? Yes, we did. There was a customer who wanted only, only the, the fruit pulp declaration on the label. Uh, it works. All you have to do is overdose it a little bit. Instead of only 0.5%, we used 0.65%. So you can have the same texture by the end. Does it affect the melting rate? Does it affect the melting rate? Uh, melting rate. But it's something really important. Yeah, it does retard it a little bit. We didn't and quantify the crystallization it. After them. Sorry? And about the crystallization, because you add more water. No problem there. The, the water capacity that we tested, the 12.33, no difference in texture. It wasn't any sandier or anything like that. But you it is important to homogenize it. But it is important to homogenize any ice cream mixture to have the... What you said about the melting rate? The melting rate, yes. we feel, it's a feeling, that it's a little bit slower. It is slower when you use citrify. Okay, but we didn't make a quantification. Put the thing and let it drip and see how much it, it really helped. 